Well, hello, I'm back again. Still got greasy hands. Uh, second job of the day, different vlog for you lot. Um, to, I'm going to try and put a one round of Stearns tube rope into the seal down there. I thought I had enough for two, but there's not quite enough there. Because what you have to do is cut the ends at about 45 degrees. So as it goes around the shaft, it makes a circle and then joins. It's the same way we used to do steam valves in the, on the Navy ships. Um, the stern tube itself, I'll show you. If I get to hold the camera, this is a first. Right, inside the bowels of the ship. Oh, boat. Here we have the stern gland. You can see the two screw threads coming out either side. Here, and there's two nuts on there that tighten it up. As you tighten those up, those two push that in and then these two lock it in position. You don't have it so tight as you can't turn the shaft by hand. Now as you can see this one is almost at the end of its travel. So what I have to do is undo these, pull this back so it's out of that tube put another round in and push it back in and then push it up level with the others. I've already repacked all this with grease and as you can see she's not dripping with water at the moment. No drips coming out. So I'm hoping and uh, it could go terribly wrong or quite easy. The boat's still in the water so this is a dodgy operation anyway. Uh, I wouldn't advise anybody to do it but there again I've been doing these kind of things for many years, so um, hopefully it's going to go all right. As I say, I'm going to draw, withdraw that, put a new round in, which goes around the shaft like that, and locks in. As you can see, that locks in position, and that will end up inside the stern tube. That's your seal, and then the grease gets pumped out around this. And all of that together creates a stern seal. I'm going to carry on and undo these bolts now. I will try and film it and uh, we'll see what happens. Off we go. Right, I don't know how many times this has been done. It hasn't been done since we've had it. So I'm going to loosen off these. These are the adjusting nuts and that's the locking nut there. So I'm going to wind this back both of them because I don't know how long that tube is inside there the flange that goes inside to push them up I've got no idea how long that is that could come back to here before it comes out so it's going to be a slow operation you can see the grease squeezing out where I've topped it up with grease from where I redid the uh, Stern tube greaser earlier on. Now this should, there might be a little bit of water come out, but that doesn't matter. The bilge pump, it's only it's only water. There's nothing else going to come out of there. The grease should stay. If the grease does come out, all it does is go down in globules and floats on the top, and I have to fish it out and dispose of it properly. Right, you're just in ones are at the end of their travel. I could take them all the way off but I'm not going to in case I've got to push this back in quick. So it's quite hard to, of course I've got the grease sucking on it as well, trying to pull it back in. Right, there's the end of it, you can see down there, we've got no water coming out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the locking nut off of each one. I can bring it back just enough. I've only got to get it in, out enough to get that piece of rope in. So, 
and this should do it. So all going well, that's what should happen. No water coming out because I've packed it with grease which is making the seal. The shaft's not turning, the boat's not going along, the propeller's only, I don't know, 18 inches underwater to this point, so the pressure isn't that great. That's the propeller shaft that goes out through another one, something like this, on the outside, and that's bolted through by the, uh, by the propeller, behind the propeller. I'm going to take this off because it's not leaking. Closed. Let this round. And when you do these, each round you put in, you put in at about 90 degrees difference where the join is. Because there's my screwdriver. Then the joints are staggered, so the next one would come down here, or even halfway round, and then the next one in a different place, as long as each one's in a different place. that to push it in and I can use the bolts to push it down the shaft. See, we've cut this so you won't see all this. <laughs> I might have to trim this one slightly. So this is how we used to do the steam valves on the warships used years ago. Not enough to trim that a bit. Okay. As I say, I don't recommend anybody trying this, but I just thought I'd show you. It's um, it's a thing your marine engineer would normally do for you, if you call one out. It seems I did that for many years. Almost there. harder when it's covered in grease. Oh my 
so as you can see I'm doing it at 45 degrees side all right wish I'd filmed cutting the other side off a lot easier. Let's get another blade out. That feels better. Trim off my angry spits. Five degrees. Those two go around. It's starting to get covered in grease now, and they slide together like that. And it makes a circle. You've got the weight and the shaft on this as well, so you've got to watch it. do now is do these up forcing that round of seal it's like a rope it's like a carbonated rope but obviously that gets covered in grease exactly the same stuff we used to use on a steam valve unfortunately there was only enough for one round but it shows you how to do it You're getting lots of water coming out when you take this sleeve out, put it back in quick. The bilge pump's ready to go, so this is just down there. As you can see on this boat, there's a, like a triangle right at the back of the boat. The water doesn't come over the top, well, I don't allow it to, but there is a, a puppy pad down there because in that section of the boat, that is the bottom of the boat there, just further back is the fuel tank on this boat. Now, this gets done up evenly. You don't want to be putting it in too much of an angle because that forces a pressure onto the shaft and will stop it. This will last me until I 
get hold of some more seal, seal rope seal. So I don't know how many is in there because I've never had this off. There is a slight angle to that, which is what I want to get rid of. As you can see, I've pushed that back now. It's given me the thickness of the seal, which I'll just show you. Where the last bit I've got left, this isn't quite enough to to make another round otherwise I, I, I would put another one and another one on top of that in there but as you can see there's a gap there I, that's no good right so I've put a new piece in there that's taken up that I could probably squeeze it slightly more but you've got to be able to turn the shaft no real resistance she's quite nice if you're too tight you're going to wear the shaft and you don't want to be doing that. So what I've done now, I'll leave it at that. Um, next time we move the boat I, sh I should check this and make sure she's not leaking anywhere. Um, I'm going to put my lock nuts back on. This is just purely to, with the vibration of the boat and what's coming through the shaft. Although there's not a lot goes through the shaft. Um, it just stops those nuts there. And coming loose and this making its way back with all the different pressures as you go into a stern and everything else putting pressure on the shaft I'll show you with one that's it and then I'll do the other one and just wind that all the way down and lock that one against I bet I got the wrong side there. Yeah. Oh no, a 50-50 chance. Of. Right, just lock that one up against that one. And then I'll do the other one. And then that should be done. Just still, I'll, I'll check that again that I can turn it. Of course I'm not doing this with rubber gloves on. Not rubber, what are they? Neoprene? I don't know. Okay, and dirty time. There you go, stay away. As I say, I do not advise anybody to do this themselves unless you know what you're doing or think you can do it. The boat is in the water, that is the main thing. If it's out of the water, you can do it all day long when you're black in the boat. That's been a normal time you do it. Shaft still turns. job's done. That's how you repack a stern gland. Well that's how I repack them. I suppose there's different ways of doing it. People have got different techniques. I say most of the time it's done outside with the boat out of the water. I need to get some in there for this winter and then when we black the boat next we'll, uh, we'll have all of it out and put brand new in. Alright, thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, pop them down below. If you've got any other experience of doing this with a boat in the water, by all means let me know. If you think I've gone wrong, let me know. Drop it down below and we'll uh, discuss it. 
Uh, if you liked it, give it a like. Um, if you want to subscribe, then please click the bell as well. That will tell you whenever we put a new one up. Thanks for watching.